Hello my dear friends, welcome back again. Now in the thorax topic, uh, we are going to learn the next topic that is about the lungs. And in the lungs topic my dear friends, first actually we are going to start with the covering of the lungs and we all know the lungs will be covered by pleura. So let us discuss all the concepts related to the pleura first of all here. Then we'll go ahead with another important topics like as usual every time our habit starting from the scratch, we'll go to the higher topics like bronchopulmonary segments, the tracheobronchial tree and the most important one, root of the lungs and all. The first, let's start from the scratch here, the covering of the lungs. Lungs will be actually covered by pleura. And we all know that the pleura will actually have like two layers. There'll be two layers in the pleura. The inner layer which is actually very closely attached to the lungs will be known as the visceral pleura. And the outer one which is on the outer side of the visceral pleura will be the parietal pleura guys. So there'll be two layers in the pleura, the inner one being the visceral pleura, the outer one will be the parietal pleura. Now to make you understand more clear, we'll do one thing, we'll draw a diagram here. Now imagine that this one here is actually the visceral pleura, the inner one which is actually very very closely attached to the lungs. And then imagine this one here to be the outer one that is the parietal pleura. And be very careful the way, look at the way how I'm drawing in the lower aspect, the inferior aspect. So let us write down uh, the names of these two pleura guys together. The outer one will be the parietal pleura and the inner one will be the visceral pleura here. The outer one will be the parietal pleura and the inner one is the visceral pleura here guys. Now between these two layers of the pleura you actually have a cavity here and this cavity is known as the pleural cavity. This is the pleural cavity here and in this pleural cavity obviously we all know there will be fluid and that fluid will be the pleural fluid. And approximately how much will be the pleural fluid? Remember, it will be almost like 5 ml. Almost approximately, it will be like 5 ml, guys. Some basic information to begin with. Now, after knowing all these things, let us go into a little bit of more depth here. We have to learn in detail about this parietal pleura over here, guys. Now, this parietal pleura is given like different, different names based on the region. For example, right lung and the left lung, between the two lungs, the space here will be the mediastinum and the parietal pleura which is towards the mediastinum, mediastinal pleura, it makes sense. And similarly, the parietal pleura which is towards the ribs over here, that will be actually the costal pleura, towards the costal surface, costal pleura. And then below here, you'll be actually having the diaphragmatic one. And then finally, yes, one very, very important one that is just above the clavicle here, a little bit projecting into the root of the neck. That will be the cervical pleura, guys. So let us write down the names of all these different varieties of the parietal pleura. First of all, this towards the mediastinum, that is nothing but the mediastinal pleura. So we are actually speaking about the parietal pleura, guys, that is mediastinal pleura. And the one which is going to take a turn over here, this one will be the costal pleura. That is costal pleura. And the one below here towards the diaphragm will be the diaphragmatic pleura. This is diaphragmatic pleura. And finally, you just imagine your clavicle here, your collarbone. And the apex of the lung will be projecting a little bit above the clavicle there. And if you want uh, to be more specific, it will be almost like 2.5 centimeters just above that clavicle. That is the region which is covered by the pleura. And that pleura is actually referred to as your cervical pleura. Cervical pleura. So let us just revise here once more for the last and final time. The parietal pleura is in turn divided into four types we can say based on the regions, simple, okay. The one towards the mediastinum will be the mediastinal pleura. The one towards the diaphragm here will be the diaphragmatic pleura. And the one towards the costal surface, towards your ribs will be the costal pleura. And above into the root of the neck will be the cervical pleura, guys. Now, the main thing that I wanted to actually teach you here regarding uh, this pleura topic and you know why we are learning about all these things over here. Why? Because if you observe between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura, you'll be able to observe there is some additional space present in the lower aspect. When you see the lower aspect of this one, in the lower inferior view, inferior aspect of this one here, between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura, you are able to appreciate some additional space over here. And this additional space is referred to as a rhesus. This will be known as the rhesus, the pleural rhesus. And there are two of them over here. Now, out of these two rhesus, what will be the name of these two rhesus, guys? We need to learn what will be the name of these two 
plural recess. Now we can easily decide the name instead of just mugging. We can easily decide the name, guys. First of all, look at this one here. Let me write down number one over here. That first recess over here is between the costal surface on one side over here. There is a costal pleura, and this is the diaphragmatic surface or diaphragmatic pleura on the other side. That's the reason why that recess is known as the costo diaphragmatic recess. Such an easy thing. So this recess here is referred to as costo diaphragmatic recess. Costo diaphragmatic recess. Perfect. And then what about this one? Let me just give number two here. The second recess over here. Now what about that? That recess is actually between the costal surface and then the mediastinal surface. So therefore, costo mediastinal recess. This is referred to as the costo mediastinal recess. So from here we can understand that there are two types of recess in the pleura. One will be the costo diaphragmatic recess, and another one will be the costo mediastinal recess. Now, guys, what is the importance of this one? Why do we have to know about these recess and all? Now, out of these two recess, you need to understand that which is more inferior recess, or we can we have to understand like which is more dependent recess. Okay. So let me show you one picture here so that the things will become much more easier. Wow! Look at this beautiful diagram here. Now in this diagram, if you just look at this hand over here, and that is actually showing into the costo diaphragmatic recess. That is costo diaphragmatic recess, which is like more inferior, most dependent one out of the two recess. And just look at this hand over here, and that is actually projecting into the costo mediastinal recess. So from here, from this diagram on the screen here, guys, it is like crystal clear. Costo diaphragmatic recess is more inferior. Whereas costo mediastinal recess will be actually more anterior. That is the reason why whenever there will be pleural effusion, accumulation of abnormal amount of the fluid, whenever there will be pleural effusion, that more amount of the fluid will be accumulated into the costo diaphragmatic recess. And that is the reason why what are we doing here? We are inserting the needle here along that mid axillary line, and we are trying to take that fluid out. And that is known as the pleural tapping. So pleural tapping is done along the mid axillary line because of this reason. Because of the presence of costo diaphragmatic recess over there, and the collection of fluid will be into that one only. It makes sense right now. So therefore, you got to remember here, out of these two recess, that is costo mediastinal recess and costo diaphragmatic recess, which is like more inferior. That is costo diaphragmatic recess is more inferior. Or we can say, or we can use one more word. It is most dependent recess. Out of the two recess, the most dependent one will be costo diaphragmatic recess. Therefore, that is used for. That is used for pleural tapping. That is the reason why it is used for pleural tapping. And we have discussed about that in detail when we studied about the intercostal space, like where exactly we are doing the pleural tapping along mid axillary line, and that to seventh or eighth or ninth intercostal space we are doing there. And then we have also discussed while you are inserting the needle, which muscles you are going to cross one by one. We have done that in detail in the intercostal space topic. So try to correlate these two topics here, and the things will become much more easier for you, people, guys. Perfectly done. So that is all about the information regarding the pleura, the visceral pleura, and the parietal pleura, and the space between the pleural cavity, and most importantly, the recess. Costo diaphragmatic recess as well as the costo mediastinal recess, and what will be the applied aspect of this one? Why do we have to study this, and what is the correlation with the pleural tapping? Perfectly done, guys. And now, after completing this, let me tell you about one important fascia which is present right at the thoracic inlet over here. So near this thoracic inlet, you will be actually having fascia, and that fascia is referred to as Simpson's fascia, and that Simpson's fascia is just covering that apex of the lung. And what are the important points to remember regarding that? Let me tell you about that in detail over here, guys. So now let us discuss about the Simpson's fascia, guys. That is the supra pleural membrane. So first of all, write down the heading there. It is also known as supra pleural membrane. Supra pleural membrane, and that same supra pleural membrane. Remember, it is also referred to as Simpson's fascia. Simpson's fascia. And there are like lot of MCQs which has been asked in the previous exams regarding this one. Now, where exactly do we have this one? This is actually present at the thoracic inlet, superior thoracic inlet over here. And where exactly that Simpson's fascia is present? Let me first of all 
like explain you over here then later on we are also going to draw the diagram that Simpson's fascia or the suprapleural membrane is attached between the first rib I mean to say the inner border of the first rib here and then from here it will be attached to the transverse process of C7 the transverse process of seventh cervical vertebra that fascia will be attached over here it is like a very strong connective tissue it is made up of a very strong connective tissue guys so where exactly do you have this one suprapleural membrane it is above cervical pleura it is above the cervical pleura now if you remember that's the reason why I have told you the parietal pleura will be actually divided into four parts that is mediastinal pleura the diaphragmatic pleura the costal as well as the cervical I'm actually speaking about this cervical pleura and it is present above the cervical pleura there guys now what it is exactly representing that is the MCQ which has been asked in the exam what is this suprapleural membrane or Simpson's fascia exactly representing guys remember it is representing the degenerated part of scalenus medius muscle degenerated part of scalenus medius muscle and that has been asked already in the exam so please remember that one guys so what is exactly the suprapleural membrane or Simpson's fascia representing it is actually the degenerated part of the scalenus medius muscle and now I'll tell you exactly what are the points to be learned some more points to be learned regarding this fascia and that we'll be actually doing inside the inner diagram guys so you just imagine this one here to be your C7 vertebra and after that C7 this one will be the T1 vertebra here guys then you just imagine here this is the transverse process of C7 I'm just drawing a schematic diagram it's a transverse process of C7 and we all know the first rib is actually going to take a turn and come in the front here but we are not going to draw the entire rib entire first rib we are actually drawing the diagram in section so you imagine here this will be the a section of your first rib over here sir this is first rib but we are not drawing the entire rib here guys that is we are just drawing the section of this one here in section then where do we exactly have this Simpson's fascia that is between the transverse process of C7 the seven cervical vertebra and the first rib the inner border of the first rib that is the Simpson's fascia and I just now told you the lungs so for example I'm not drawing the entire lung over here for example if this is your lung over here which is actually covered by the visceral pleura adhering to that one and then you'll be having further the parietal pleura which is covering the upper part of the lung that is the parietal pleura and which part of the parietal pleura is that one that is the cervical part cervical part in the root of the lung so just above that cervical pleura you'll be actually having this Simpson's fascia now apart from that what else do you have to remember here guys this is representing the Simpson's fascia which is nothing but the degenerated part of the scalenus medius muscle now apart from all this information here what else do you have to remember you need to remember the position of subclavian vessels over here guys where do we have the subclavian vessels are they passing beneath this fascia or above the fascia so remember here you'll be actually having the subclavian artery here and then you'll be actually having the subclavian vein over here guys subclavian vein so therefore the subclavian vessels are present where only they are present above the Simpson's fascia so these are subclavian vessels and both of them are actually present above the Simpson's fascia there guys so that is something important and uh, we can always expect this question to be asked again in the exam and you got to remember this in a relation with the thoracic inlet here guys so after learning the topic of the entire pleura so try to remember about the Simpson's fascia also which is also known as the suprapleural membrane now once we are done with all this introductory things here in the lungs topic then next let us move on to some important topics in the lungs guys that's all done